need a better life. But I think for us here in the UK, uh, our policy should be no more in. Um, I think comparing us to other countries and what other countries have done, I think it's a very unfair comparison because other countries are geographically much bigger than us. Countries like Germany, etc., are much bigger than us. We have much less space. And not only that, but we also already are one of the most densely populated. Already uh, our national health service is at breaking point. Already the government isn't, is not adequately funding the police. So I think, I think if anybody has done a breathing space, it's us. Right, but ju just to go back on, on some of the comparisons you made, uh, clearly at the moment, we are part of the European Union. You may like that, you may not. I'm, I'm not necessarily going to go down that road with you. But if you're part of this large body of countries, and there's a lot of people saying that it's got to be sold at the level of that large body, don't those people therefore have to be shared out within the European Union? Well, uh, the British people uh, have not had a referendum on the European Union for several decades now. You're about to get one, Will. Sorry? You're about to get one. Well, we were told that in the last government, actually. Uh, and the point is, at no point have the British people voted to have open borders where practically anybody can come in. Okay. We've been letting uh, people in, in very large numbers for decades now. Um, already, uh, our services are at a breaking point. Uh, already, uh, e you know, the amount of house building going on, even in places like Devon, uh, is, is horrendous. Uh, Let, me put that point back. Let me put it back to Malcolm, Will, if, you, if I may. Um, Malcolm, we'll come back on that. This argument that you heard from Will very clearly, uh, we have done our bit to a large extent. Uh, we have got services which are a breaking point re with reference to education. So this is Thomas. Well, you can't, can't, can't you push this? Oh, look, can't push the car downhill. Push it downhill. Come on. No, no downhill. That's up the hill. And Come on, push it down, Hilton. <laughs> no, leave it. Try to push it up, Hill. Oh! How can you... Oh, 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 you're pushing it up, Hill, very fast. Sorry. Whoa, how, how can you push it up, Hill, so much? Oh, you're not even touching it now. Who's going up, Hill? Oh. What do you think of that? That's the electric road. So in an electric road you can push your car? Yeah. <laughs> there you go, you've pushed it up that hill. But you can't push it downhill, can you? Yeah, why? Magic. Who Come on. <laughs> Must be. Must, I think it's all to do with that magical island over there. What do you think? Come on then, let's get back in the car, we've got to go up to Stalin. Put that thing back. I mean, even during the 19th century in Britain, the kind of traditional Celticist attitude towards the Irish were, God, you wouldn't let them run a country. But after the business of the day is over, they're lovely people who can go along and they sing a lovely song. Solomon had the gift of wisdom. 
wisdom and Solomon was a very good king and he built a temple a huge temple to God in the middle of Jerusalem and it was called Solomon's temple and that was the main temple for the Israelites and if you go to Jerusalem today you can still see the place where the temple used to be and it was said to be the most magnificent building in the world and King Solomon had lots and lots of girlfriends and one of the most famous was the Queen of Sheba and she came to visit him she was the Queen of Sheba with so many like camels and elephants and lots of gold and jewels and everything mm. well that's the story of King Solomon King Solomon uh, was one of the greatest kings ever and I said that like King Solomon's temple it was the most beautiful building in all the world Uh, I don't know where he got all the girlfriends from. He did have a lot of girlfriends, to be honest with you. About a thousand. presumably depend on people drinking more is trying to stop people drinking. I think I'd stop you there because I don't think um, you don't want people to drink more per se. What you want is, you know, you want people to enjoy your brand over many years, actually. That's a really important part. Do you think that the bulk of the responsibility lies with the individual? No, I think the responsibility lies with us as a society. So from everyone from producer, to a local bartender, to an employer, to a family, to a friend, 